Modal verbs are verbs like should, can, could, might, will etc. that show if we believe something is certain, possible or impossible. They are also used to do things like talk about ability, ask permission, and make requests and offers. Modal verbs are used together with the main verb of the sentence and they cannot be used on their own. Let's see usage of modals and examples. 1. Can expressing ability, possibility, or permission. A. I can speak French fluently. B. He can't possibly be telling the truth. C. Can I borrow your phone for a moment? 2. Could expressing past ability or conditional possibility. A. She could dance beautifully when she was young. B. If you could come to the party, that would be great. 3. Shall expressing obligation, suggestion, or offer. A. I shall finish my work before going to sleep. B. Shall we celebrate your birthday at a fancy restaurant? C. I shall bake a cake for you. 4. Should expressing advice, recommendation, or expectation. A. You should exercise every day for better health. B. We should arrive at the airport two hours before our flight. C. This cake should be kept in the fridge. 5. Would expressing conditional or polite request. A. If I were you, I would accept this job offer. B. Would you mind passing the salt, please? C. I would appreciate it if you could help me. 6. Must, expressing obligation, necessity, or certainty. A. You must wear a seat belt when you drive. B. We must submit this report by the end of the week. C. She must be tired because she worked all night. 7. May, expressing permission, possibility, or uncertainty. A. May I leave the meeting early? B. It may rain later today. C. He may not have heard the phone ring. 8. Might, expressing possibility, suggestion, or hesitation. A. She might come to the party if she finishes her work. B. Might I suggest that we take a different route? C. I might be wrong, but I think this is the right way. Modal verbs are an important aspect of English grammar that can help you to express your thoughts and ideas more effectively. By mastering their different uses, you can communicate your intentions more clearly and sound more natural in your speech and writing. In the passive voice, the focus of the sentence is on the action being performed rather than the person or thing that is performing the action. Passive voice constructions are often used when the person or thing performing the action is unknown or unimportant, or when the writer wants to put emphasis on the action rather than the doer. Passive voice constructions typically follow this formula. Object of the action plus auxiliary verb to be plus past participle verb. Let's see examples. The window was broken by a stone. This is a passive voice construction because the subject, the window, is not the agent or performer of the action, breaking. The agent is a stone, which is introduced by the preposition by. The verb phrase was broken is formed by using a form of the verb to be, was, and a past participle of a transitive verb, broken. Mistakes were made. This is a passive voice construction because the subject, mistakes, is not the agent or performer of the action, making. The agent is not specified in this sentence, which means that we don't know or don't want to say who made the mistakes. The verb phrase were made is formed by using a form of the verb to be, were, and a past participle of a transitive verb, made. It is believed that he was innocent. This is a passive voice construction because the subject, it, is not the agent or performer of the action, believing. The agent is very general and diffuse in this sentence, which means that we don't need to say who believes it. The verb phrase is believed is formed by using a form of the verb to be, is, and a past participle of a transitive verb, believed. This study was conducted in 2020. This is a passive voice construction because the subject, this study, is not the agent or performer of the action, conducting. The agent is not mentioned in this sentence, which means that we want to use an impersonal tone or style. The verb phrase was conducted is formed by using a form of the verb to be, was, and a past participle of a transitive verb, conducted. The difference between to be and to get in passive voice is that to be is more neutral and formal, 
while to get is more informal and implies some kind of change or result one. We can use to get with action verbs, but not with stative verbs too. For example, she was promoted last month. Neutral and formal. She got promoted last month. Informal and implies a change in her status. He was known for his generosity. Neutral and formal. He got known for his generosity. Incorrect because no is a stative verb. However, sometimes to get is not used as a passive voice construction, but as part of an expression or an adjectival passive too. For example, they got married last year. Expression meaning they married each other. He got lost in the woods. Adjectival passive meaning he became lost. I hope this helps you understand the difference between to be and to get in passive voice. Infinitives and gerunds are both verb forms that can function as nouns in a sentence. Infinitives are formed by adding to before the base form of a verb, such as to eat, to play, or to listen. Gerunds are formed by adding ing to the end of a verb, such as eating, playing, or listening. Infinitives and gerunds can be used as the subject of a sentence. For example, to travel around the world requires a lot of time and money. Swimming is good exercise. The object of a verb. For example, Jim always forgets to eat. Daniel quit smoking a year ago. The object of a preposition. For example, I look forward to helping you paint the house. She is interested in learning Spanish. However, some verbs can only be followed by infinitives or gerunds, while some verbs can be followed by both but with different meanings. For example, only infinitives, do you want to call your family now? Want plus infinitive, he advised me to sell all my shares of stock. Advise plus noun pronoun plus infinitive. Only gerunds, Paul avoids using chemicals on the vegetables he grows. Avoid plus gerund, she admitted stealing the money. Admit plus gerund. Relative clauses are subordinate clauses that give us more information about a noun or a noun phrase in the main clause. Relative clauses are sometimes called adjective clauses because they add descriptions in a similar way to adjectives. Relative clauses usually start with a relative pronoun or a relative adverb, such as who, which, that, when, where or whose. There are two types of relative clauses, defining and non-defining. Defining relative clauses tell us which noun we are talking about and are essential for the meaning of the sentence. For example, She's the woman who cuts my hair. Who tells us which woman we mean? The laptop that I bought last week has started making a strange noise. That tells us which laptop we mean. Non-defining relative clauses give us extra information about something that is already clear or known. They are not essential for the meaning of the sentence and are usually separated by commas. For example, I live in London, which has some fantastic parks. Which gives us extra information about London. He's a musician whose albums have sold millions. Whose gives us extra information about him? The choice between who? which and that depends on the type of relative clause you are using and whether you are talking about people or things. In defining relative clauses, you can use who or that for people, and which or that for things. For example, she's the woman who slash that cuts my hair. Defining clause about a person. The laptop which slash that I bought last week has started making a strange noise. Defining clause about a thing. In non-defining relative clauses, you can use who for people, but not that. You can use which for things, but not that. For example, I live in London, which has some fantastic parks. Non-defining clause about a thing. He's a musician whose albums have sold millions. Non-defining clause about a person. A simple way to remember this is to think of which as disposable like a sandwich bag. If you can remove the clause without destroying the meaning of the sentence, the clause is non-essential and you can use which. 
Participles are verb forms that can function as adjectives, nouns, or as part of compound verb tenses. There are three kinds of participles in English grammar, present participle or ing form, past participle, and perfect participle. Present participles are formed by adding ing to the base form of a verb. They can be used as a continuous form in tenses, e.g. past progressive, example, they were just standing there. As an adjective to describe an effect, e.g. interesting, example, I seem to be interesting for them. As a gerund, a noun made from a verb, example, they were only interested in grazing. After verbs of sensation plus object, to emphasize the progress of an action or a value judgment example, I watch them grazing. After go slash come, to express an activity example, I often go walking in the countryside. To shorten an active clause that shares the same subject with another clause example, the sheep were just standing there wagging their tails. Past participles are formed by adding ed to regular verbs or using an irregular form for irregular verbs. They can be used as a perfect form in tenses, e.g. present perfect, example, I have seen them before. As an adjective to describe a state, e.g. broken, example, the window was broken by a stone. After verbs like have slash get slash make plus object, to express causation or result example, he got married last year. After verbs like be slash become slash get plus object, to express change or transformation example, he became interested in politics. After verbs like see slash hear slash feel plus object, to express completion of an action example, I saw him leave. Perfect participles are formed by using having plus past participle. They can be used to shorten a passive clause that shares the same subject with another clause example. Having been warned about the storm, they decided not to go out. To express cause and effect between two actions in the past example, having eaten so much grass, they were full up.